Hurricane Irma unleashing its power on the Caribbean and already turning deadly, claiming at least 10 lives. And now half of Puerto Rico has lost power and nearly 50,000 homes are without water. Meanwhile, authorities are doing their best to get supplies and emergency workers to other Caribbean islands hit hard by Irma, including Antigua and Barbuda. The prime minister says nearly every single building has been damaged and all of the damage and devastation comes as people all across Florida are preparing for the worst with many choosing to get out of town. This morning we have team coverage. Mark Lehman's live at Port Canaveral where cruise ships are returning right now to get people to safety. But we start with South Shell Saunders live along the turnpike at a busy uh, stop station there. Yeah, definitely busy here. We've been seeing lines of cars all morning and FHP Florida uh, Highway Patrol is concerned about the amount of people. The biggest issue for them right now is keeping roads as clear as possible and constantly moving. Mass evacuations like this are a safety hazard, but necessary. I'm going to take you to video from last night as people were headed up here. 75 was a mess. Crazy traffic as expected. The governor issued a mandatory evacuation for the Miami Dade area. That's a a lot of folks who had to get out and fast to help the roads. FHP has now issued an order saying no cars can be stopped along the highway only in an emergency. They've also told drivers who've had to abandon their cars that they will be told. Drivers tell me they've seen plenty of people actually sleeping on the so shoulders, and that's a major concern for troopers. Yeah, they look tired, like just pulled over because they just need a break because that road, literally, the traffic is not, like, it's not go, it's just stop. You just stand still. Yeah, that woman was coming from Miami. She tells me it took her about seven or so hours just to get here to Orlando. It's normally a little over four. She's headed to Georgia. Many people are going to places like Tennessee or further out in the state. Just want you guys to see that long line of people trying to get gas. Troopers want to remind you that you can only get gas for your car and not for uh, anything else. And it's only for the car that you are driving. For now, reporting live at the Turkey Lake Service Plaza, Sashel Saunders, News 6. Thank you, Sashel. And to give you an idea of how many people are being told to leave the South Florida area, here are some numbers right now under mandatory orders to evacuate, including 100,000 people in just Miami-Dade County, in addition to people living in low-lying areas of Broward County and all the Florida Keys. For now, no evacuations have been ordered for parts, any parts of Central Florida, but we'll let you know if anything changes. And the path of Hurricane Irma has forced Disney to bring back two of its ships to Port Canaveral earlier than planned. The cruise line made that decision, saying it was just too risky to stay out at sea. Our team coverage continues now with Mark Lehman with us live at Port Canaveral this morning and marked the cruise line saying it's better to be safe than to be sorry. Yes, these cruise lines are not wanting to take any chances with this storm. Three ships are scheduled to return early today. One of them is right here behind me. Just arrived here at Port Canaveral within the last hour. This is the Disney dream, and this is coming as we're seeing the destruction Irma has already brought to the Caribbean. The whole house is vibrating. The glass is shaking. Hurricane Irma bringing the strongest winds in a century to the island of Puerto Rico as residents were warned to brace for gusts topping 200 miles per hour Wednesday. The deadly storm pummeling islands in the Caribbean as it continues on a destructive path. This is it. I hope this is it. St. Martin took a direct hit. Wind and pelting rain blew palm trees horizontal. Boats were left tangled in the port as cars were nearly submerged. One tourist tweeted that the noise of the storm was insane. It was like standing behind a jet engine. He took shelter in a concrete stairwell of a hotel. In St. Barthelemy, roofs flew off buildings and streets became rivers. Powerful winds and rain transforming islands that are usually tropical paradises and giving Florida a look at what we might be in for this weekend. And within the next couple of hours, passengers are expected to be uh, getting off the Disney dream. We're going to be talking with them as they're now making storm preps of their own as their trips were cut short uh, in the Caribbean. Also, it's uh, important to point out that here at Port Canaveral, the port is going to be shutting down on Saturday, if not earlier, because of Hurricane Irma and preps are all ma being made all up and down the coast here in Brevard County. Bridget. All right. Mark Lehman live at the port. Thank you. And workers in Orange County say shelters are expected to open Saturday. They say while people not in low lying areas don't need to evacuate, Irma isn't a storm to take lightly. We also cannot, can't overstate how big 
this hurricane is and how potentially dangerous it is. We're, we're hoping, we're praying that it continues to veer a little bit further to the east and skirts us altogether. But the last thing that we can afford is for any of our residents, any of our citizens to take this for granted. County workers say they handed out over 28,000 sandbags yesterday in just four hours. Demand has been so high, you do need to show ID to prove you live in the county. We have a full listing of sandbag pickup sites across Central Florida on ClickOrlando.com. And the one thing in high demand across Central Florida also is gasoline. Some stations have simply run out. Stations that do have a supply, though, are seeing these long lines like this Costco in Altamont Springs. Governor Scott has also called the governors of Georgia, Alabama, and the Carolinas for help to bring in more fuel ahead of the storm. He said the problems should improve starting today. We will keep you posted. And in a few minutes, Governor Scott's expected to give an update on how Florida's prepping for Hurricane Irma. He'll go live on CBS this morning. That's coming straight up at 7 o'clock right here on News 6 after your morning news. At time now is 639. Let's get a check with meteorologist Troy Bridges. He has the latest on Irma's track. Hey, yeah, Troy. if you've missed the track, we want to show it a lot so that you get a chance to see it and understand what's going on. A category 5 with winds at 180 miles per hour moving west northwest at 17, likely weakening a little bit as it interacts with land over Cuba as we head into Saturday, making a turn early Sunday and about that time early Sunday morning, two, three, four o'clock in the morning Sunday, making a landfall, maybe the keys, maybe for my Miami and then moving north from there. In fact, central Florida, all of Florida, except for the panhandle under that cone of uncertainty. I just saw on Facebook someone wanted us to mention more communities. Let me just make it clear. All of central Florida will see tropical storm force winds coming into play as we head into the afternoon and evening on Saturday, but more so on Sunday and on Monday. So no matter where you live in central Florida, you will be dealing with tropical storm force winds during that time period. In fact, there's also the possibility of hurricane force winds as a possible category three will be anywhere along this line, which would be Monday at 2 a.m. with winds at 120 miles per hour. So again, the cone, it could wobble either way. Hopefully it would push out to sea. Not a big chance of that. Could be over downtown Orlando or Kennedy Space Center. Again, that's Monday with hurricane force winds on top of us. So we've got to be ready for some wind damage leading to power outages. There's that spin that big action there around the center of circulation. You can see still well defined. We're losing some of the radar imagery as it's moving away from the radar site at San Juan, but be ready for more of this to move in as it fuels is fueled by these warm ocean waters.